had the the business or whatever the you know six at best or whatever you had said and I'm just really curious as to since that video has happened have you reached out to her to maybe just say anything like you know I'm sorry that you know it came across the way that it did or you know anything too hard to just kind of say like maybe I, my tone or maybe what I said or my frustration that you weren't respecting, you know, what I was trying to do that night with, with my show led me to act the way that I did. Because when you I saw I it, find, I was stunned. What, you know what I find interesting? Is that you expect a man who was running a business when a woman who was an avid viewer of the show called in on an inappropriate day and I did my level best to talk to this woman, irrespective of my platform, and for 23 minutes, I tried to give her exactly what she wanted. So, and no, has she called me to say, you know what, sir? I'm sorry for calling in on the wrong day. I know I should have did that. I'm sorry for not paying attention, picking up my phone, doing that. I'm sorry for laughing and acting and acting inappropriate. See, but that's the way the conversation's always been. It's always on the black man to bend over backwards and come back to queen black woman and beg for your forgiveness. It ain't gonna happen. I said what I meant and I meant what I said. That's why it's up. That's right. Okay. And that's and that's fine. Okay, so you didn't. So my thing is this I didn't like, nor should I I didn't and I don't and nor should I nor should I have been expecting Okay, and that's to. fine. That's that's your your it's your show, it's your decision. But this is the other thing. If you are a because I'm I'm on television as well. And if you are on if you have your own show and somebody is doing something that you find disrespectful to your show, just like you hung up on me, you could have hung up on her. You know what I'm saying? Like you didn't even have to continue having the Please conversation. Please don't tell me what I should or should not do. I, I didn't did say what you, I, did. I said you could Look, have. Rochelle, Rochelle, I could have done a lot of things, but I did what I did. Yeah, see, I know you the, did. I'm just thing. saying. Okay, but here's the thing. You're just saying, but here's the thing. I find it I find it very rich. We are always telling men what we should do. They told Kevin Kelly what he should do in his restaurant too. He put a million dollars plus into a business during the pandemic to employ black people. And because he said, get the fuck out, I don't need your money. They wanted to cancel a brother. 82% of men say there are no marriageable women on the market. When are you ladies gonna start listening to men instead of telling us what we should do? Exactly. I didn't say, okay. Yes, you have. I didn't sis. say, <laughs> I did not say what you, I didn't say you had to do that. But what I'm saying well, is- Why would you think it's it on my, like, why would you think it, okay, why would you think it's on me to reach out to this woman and call her. She is not a poor we woman. We moved past that, Kevin. Hold on, no, we know, no, 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 no. But the thing is, hold on. But my question okay. is, I didn't ask you a follow-up question. Why would I need to follow up with a middle-aged entrepreneur, 35-year-old business owner, mother of one, to, to coddle her feelings like she's a wounded little bird? That's not what I said. I asked you a question. I asked you if you did. I didn't say why that would you I should need have. To, I but didn't why would say I need that you to? needed to. I just asked you a question. That's it. You didn't do it. Okay, moving on. I never said you needed to do anything. I just asked but you. You asked a you question did. for a re okay. And the thing is, <laughs> if I were Gordon Ramsay, if I were Simon Cowell, I wouldn't be asked, well, did you say did you did you really have to be the way you when you told that person they they are ghastly singer, did you did you send them a message and say I shouldn't have said it? How you Simon doing? Cowell is a narcissist and an asshole too. So, I mean, oh, there's no difference two. between them two. Oh, okay, <laughs> two. Two. Interesting, two. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's funny. I, I'm sorry to step in. I think it's really funny that a lot of people are so up, uptight or concerned about your tone when you spoke with her. When, again, like you said, she called in. She's in she was a listener, so she, she should be used to your tone and how you present whatever dialogue that you you're having and she asked you very she asked you questions that you were specifically answering and she was ignoring and I think it's a little funny that so many people feel that you were out of line when you were very clear to me you were extremely patient and I also think that the woman was not expecting you to be as thorough as you were because she was not really prepared and so I don't uh, think like I don't think she deserved an apology at all it wasn't a, a situation that required it she should have taken the information as you gave it to her and hopefully she'll put it forth and maybe she'll get that six figure guy that she thinks that she's, you know, well, and see, I'll, so I, of course, and I've been told that I've cursed the woman out. I said, bra, I said, damn, 
in the, in the context of a lot of goddamn nerve, I said, broad, and then I said, get the fuck off my phone. Over the course of a 23 minute conversation, that was on the way of hanging up. But yet I've cursed this woman out. I've heard some of the most disingenuous responses from women. I've heard grown women that are about 10 years older than this woman call this woman a young, helpless woman and da 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 da. Here's the thing. If women are, men are not going to speak to you like women. And if you need us to speak to you like women, go get a woman. Men are fed up with this narrative. And when we speak, you say we're hurt, you're bitter, you're this, what, what, what's, what's, what's going on with the last 30 years of media in the image of black men? Men are speaking their truths and men are speaking what they're saying and you're not going to silence them, shame them. You're not going to maneuver them because here's what ends up happening. Like it or not, of the black men who marry and go to college and have a bachelor's or higher, 30% marry out. Why? We want to say they hate themselves. They're self-haters. They can't deal with a strong black woman. But you never ask the men why. We never ask the men why they're doing what they do. We just chastise them for doing what they do. And I, my show has proved in for six months night in night out what women want and i don't judge what they want i just ask what's the likelihood of you getting it and what kind of and what does the kind of man that you want want from a woman and that's when it starts to fall apart why is it such a difficult ask to get the average sister to see where the men are coming from especially the men that you say you want I don't get it, but we're going to keep it, keep it going. Uh, raise your hand. Do, 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 do. Um, and I will say this too, to the men. Here's my challenge to the men, especially if you're one of the men that falls in this category. You guys need to stop being quiet. I know you have jobs. I know we have the cancel culture. But of the thousands of responses, women think that it's a minority of men because they're not hearing it. And unfortunately, we all have something to, to do in this regard. It's not just for content creators or these people. It's for average everyday folks to start telling the truth. Here's over the holiday. When you go back home to your, your family, say what you really think and stop telling women what, what you believe they want to hear just to keep the peace. If you want a different outcome. <clears throat> Let's see. We got a lot of people with their hands raised. So I'll go to Jared. You're next up. Jared. Hello. Okay, well he's you gotta you gotta wait for him. You gotta wait for him to accept the invite to come up. Oh, okay. All right, cool. I agree with I feel like that woman that came on, um, she sold herself short by I, I think you asked her like to rate herself and you know she said she was a five and I think she should have rated herself much higher if she why thought... why I don't you think know? she believes she was a five either but, why, feel... but, but my, my question is my question is when did it become so most people are average or normal you know I feel like okay so you told her she was average at best. So I didn't take, I was not offended by that. That is- What does that mean? Let me explain what average at best means. Uh -huh. When you are a five, when you wake up, that means most of the times you are average. At best, you are a six. So over your lifetime, you're average at best and we're only getting older. Gravity is only taking more of effect. We know how this works. Okay, so aside from that, I think what Rochelle is referring to is like, and what you said is you called her broad. You told her to get the F off of your your phone. You know, I think as you said men don't need to speak to women as women, then what should they speak to them as? Like how No, no, speak to men. No, we don't need to speak to women like we're women. Oh, like you're women. Okay, I right. understand. Uh, but the thing is like it was your 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 
your delivery, if that's how you decide to deliver things, it's okay. Everybody has their way. No, actually, really, let's be honest. Really, it isn't written. It's not okay. It's I not mean, okay, or, or else it wouldn't be such a backlash. Okay. Well, I mean, I think part of the reason you do that is because it draws, you know, it no, it, why, it draws okay, attention well, you can, too. No, 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 no. See, see, we don't ask men questions. We tell them what we do. You tell me what I do. You have a chance to ask me any question you want, and you're telling me about. Okay, me. so why do you do that then? Like, why did you speak to her that way? Because it was deserved at that point. Did you watch the entire twenty-three was, minute like, video? Hold up, I'm sorry. Excuse hold me. Up, excuse. Oh, don't, don't. <laughs> please don't. Was that Rochelle? Watching her. Yes, it was, was Rochelle. Rochelle but... No, yeah, that's, not gonna, that's not going. No. That's not going to work, ma'am. Okay. You don't well, have. You don't, you don't. You don't have. To, okay. You don't have to be here, ma'am. You don't have to. Oh no, I'm. I'm about to leave. But really quick. So your advice to men is to tell women. To Again, Kevin, that was <laughs> not nice. Whoa, why oh, was yeah, that not nice? nice? She was being rude. That's how you, how have, to that nice? that's me, how you stop, have to do it. Stop. That is what the black community is used to. One way aggression. You're used to women being able to be verbally aggressive and abusive to men, and we're just supposed to take it. I won't. Was that woman? So the reason why I ma'am, let me finish what I'm let me also say this. That woman is a professional. You know how to conduct yourself, but see, the thing is, black men are men not. There is there is a low level contempt and lack of respect for the overall black male image. So when black men finally respond, you question us as to why we responded. Well, I tell you what, if, if Isaac and I were dialoguing back and forth, we would have to understand that there's a line that we don't cross because there's a low level threat of violence between men. Between a man and a woman, you guys have no consequences. You're completely protected to where you can see a woman who's five foot something, a hundred and something, calling a six foot, 300 pound, you punk motherfucker piece of shit, nigga. Dip, 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 dip. And that has an effect. Men are not doing this anymore. You want to be respected? I have thousands of, I have hundreds of hours of me speaking to women with respect because it was given. I mirror back what I get. I, I don't understand. Well, <laughs> and if you think, and if, and if you ladies need to understand something, men are sitting back listening to how you talk to another man that you have a disagreement with. You don't like what I did. But instead of just saying, you know what? You're a grown man. It's your platform. You have the right to do what you do. She was fault on both sides. No, no. I'm going to get you told. Let me tell you what's, what's going to go on with you. That's not going to work, lady. I agree. I think there's a way to, like, discuss things. And you don't have to yell. And, you know, you don't have to agree. But I'm asking, what did that woman do for you to, like, curse at her like that? Man, she... when you say curse at her like what? Let's be let's be real. What, what, curse, what curse did I say? Well, you're like, you called her broad. And I don't, I think that's offensive like i wouldn't want someone but to that's not a curse ma'am well that's not, not right, no i'm talking about when you said like get you said like get the f off of my phone or something and like, i was hanging was up but, i mean we gotta be honest ma'am hold on you see black women i was raised by black women and y'all know how to curse straight you see you're over your it's hyper it's hyperbole you cursed at that woman uh y'all curse y'all call each other far worse than we ever could I said, the problem I have with you broads, because she was acting like a broad at that point. I called it what I saw. That's what I saw at the point. That was 18 minutes into the phone call. It ain't like she picked up the phone and it was, it was that. And everybody keeps going back to that point. You said broad, you said the F word, you said this. Well, how about this? How come she didn't just go this decide to say, I'm sorry, sir, I've called it the wrong day. I'll go ahead and book a session. How about that? That's fair. I agree. It's with more that. than fair. And I said, well, since you don't want it, and I said it at the beginning, you're an average fan, you know how this works. Well, come on. I, I was like, all right. I'm going to do this and use it as a teaching lesson. And I and that's exactly what happened. 
You know, and what also- I offered multiple times during this. I said, "Man, please don't make me do this. Please don't make me say that." Book a session. I think you need it, but she kept putting. She kept pushing. Well, what do you? Well, what? Well, what? Well, what? Well, what? Here's my. Here's the better question. What? I, for everybody that seems to be such a detractor, what should a man say when he continues to get pushed and pushed and pushed to the edge? What should he say or what should he do? I think. Um... I think just disengage. And I guess you tried to do that. I right. That was your way of mm-hmm. disengaging with her. So, so like, I can understand, yeah. Right. So a man disengages and you can't disengage with somebody who's not going to disengage. See, that's what black men continue to get told to do, to just mute yourself. Don't speak. Just be the strong, silent type. Just, just take it. Stand right. in it. Bear under But, it. you know, like when you say that part, It's like, um, I do understand what you're saying. I do understand your frustration. Black men have it very rough. And women, we we have more of an outlet to be a bit more sensitive and express our feelings and our frustration. But you know, like you keep saying men are told to do this and men are told to do that. But what if you meet a woman that's uh, Man, Yana Van women. Zandt on Fix My Life said, when when, when men said, men, she said, I would, when questioned about dealing with black women's problems, she said, I would teach my sons to stand in it with her. Random black women. This is what black men have been told, to stand in it with you. Here's the funny thing. That woman wanted a six-figure man off the rip. She didn't, I said, why don't you get an average man? Why don't you get a Henry, a high earner, not richer? Why don't you build with somebody? Nope, she wanted microwave ready to go. So you don't want to build with a man, but yet we're supposed to stand in your mess with you. How <laughs> ironic. This is, this is, and this is why I say, you ladies may not like what I'm saying, but 82% of men are sitting back high-fiving. Mm-hmm. Everywhere I go around this country, men are thanking me. I agree with, like 98 percent of what you say your delivery is a bit but how i can't shoot the messenger however it gets but cold, we do it we do it is what we it don't is. Speak, but if i was a black woman it would be just fine I a think black it, woman can say what she wants to a black man <laughs> no that's not true i think really? that there is this i think really so this. so 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 it, so are you honestly saying that the roles are reversed the, a black woman would have gotten the firestorm of backlash that I had. Absolutely no. not. No, 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 Kevin. No. So let's be. We got to start being honest. We're used to one way aggression with men, and it's like, well, what do you want the men to do? And this was what the men are getting: conflicting messages. I think that there is this this unfortunate, like you said, many women. Let me are bring up some more people. Many women are raised, you know, with this thought that men are supposed to have this unnatural level of restraint and that Mm -hmm. they're supposed to have this, you know, this unnatural uh, barrier that stops, stops them from acting out of control. Meanwhile, as women, we could act out of control, even when it comes to physical assault. There are plenty of men that are physically being abused, but they're taught not to accept, to accept the, the, the abuse while the women, as soon as you get that response that you were actually looking for, now we have a Me Too campaign or now we have these other different campaigns and, and cancel cultures against that man who may have been taking abuse from this woman. So I, I definitely think that this there, there is this, um, especially in the African-American community, I think that there is this unspoken thing where we train our men and we train our sons to have this unnatural level of restraint meanwhile we don't do the same with women i think that's a generalization though because i do understand what you're saying daisy um i'm a i'm a sagittarius i have all the fire in me and it has taken me uh years and many experiences to lower my temper and speak to men with respect and you know don't raise your voice and and i, I think is that there Brittany? Is women, you have to work on that's a skill that's a is skill. that Brittany? yes um so I, I gotta ask um are you in your 30s 40s 20s i'm 33 i just turned 33 like two weeks ago why are you walking around with so much fire for men that you don't know no no i don't do you 
feel that I'm giving you fire. Well, you said you you no no you said if I heard you correctly you said it is taking you years to get it. Oh under no, control. I mean like naturally, um, you know, like I'm not someone. Well, all the women in my I'm, I'm, I'll be honest, majority of women in my family are Sagittarius, but that I don't. Yeah, and we have. But a but lot that's only but, it, but right? it's only but it's but it's only. But they, but but here's the funny thing. I found all these Sagittarius women could keep their mouth control when it when their white paycheck was on the line. Um. Well, I, my mother's a Sagittarius. My, all of the of the women that raised me, they were all born between uh, all birth November, all their birthdays are between between November twenty second and December twelfth. Right. And all that Sagittarian aggression got checked when it was time to go to work. So listen, was, let me tell you. So I like at thirty three, I it didn't take me this long, but it took me a while to like lower my get rid of the ego you can't fight every battle you can't do this you can't do that it it is a skill for me while other people um you know it comes naturally it's something that i really had to work on so you know daisy i do kind of understand what, but what, I, what i'm not understanding is though that sagittarius women have existed for forever but i'm still not okay you're allowed, you can say that you've had to get it under control, but you're also allowed to go off. Everyone is, yes. No, you're really not. Men are not. And see, the Without women in my family- crazy consequences, right? Well, but see, is the thing is, yeah but, the th yeah, but see, I mean, I don't know what your marital status is, but as a black man out here, the rank and file sister, for the most part, feels as though they can talk to us any kind of way. Not this is what, oh, excuse me, ma'am. I don't want to do all this. Not all, not all, not all. There's an ethnic stereotype that's rooted in, in, in lived realities. Look, if you are a company and you want to put somebody at, uh, why, if you are a company and you want to put somebody in charge of complaints, who tends to be in that department? Huh? I'm sorry. Can you please repeat that one more time? <laughs> I, no, okay. I'm telling okay, my let, friends. Oh, 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 no, okay, I'm so, telling so my let me, friends. Let me, let me just say, I'll, just, I'll just say it this way. Uh, black women have an earned reputation of being tough. Collections department, customer service. You want to, you want to, you want to end up getting things handled in a certain way. People weaponize that fire you have, and that's and and that's fine. But you're weaponizing it for some company's gain. How is it benefiting us as men for you to weaponize that against us? Especially if I don't know you, right? You should be walking around with fire for me, right? Can I, Kevin? Can I ask you a question? Sure. Let me let me let me let me ask you this though: Is there a way? because I think there's so much aggression and tension between black women and men and women at this point. Is there a way to have conversation with de-escalation as opposed to escalation? Exactly. Not that you, not that you, not that you have to do, not that, not that. Yeah, the answer is yes. Okay. And, I, and here's and, the one, and here's the one, here's how, here's how it happens in my opinion. You have to come to the table in good faith. If you're not coming in good faith, then it's gonna, then the ch then it's just you can set your watch. It's gonna go off the rails. And in, in in the profession that, in the in the professions that I'm in, sometimes you deal with people with egos and attitudes and tempers and man men or women. And I feel like the best approach. This is just me personally, and I, this is the best approach is always to have a a means to an end, the goal, right? The goal is to get the, the, the record done, the deal done, the relationship intact. So therefore, even if the person on the other end is rude or angry or hostile, there's not much someone can do when, when fire is met with lack of oxygen. You suck the oxygen out of the situation that doesn't give a person the opportunity to burn hotter. Well, that works that that can work in a profession it doesn't work in personal lives 
You, uh, you don't. I, I, I well. Not, I, not, not, I, not, I not as effectively. Well, I'm okay. In general, it does not. Okay. Yes, in a profession, because you're submitting yourself to a greater goal. Most I mean, people. In, okay, in interpersonal relationships, if you're not submitted to a, okay. Our relationships today, who's submitting to who? You can't even say the word submit to a sister. Not you're not going and you're supposed to so what are you submitted to we got a 51 what's the divorce rate in the black community it's higher than the national average but eight out of ten divorces filed by women even if you say half of the divorces are filed for the worst parts of the bible adultery this that fully half for our women are walking away from men that do not deserve to have the title of husband or have a wife that still gives us four out of ten being filed we have to look at what's going on with women today. We have always asked what's going on with the men until we start to have an unflinching look at where women are today in relation to what, and also, and women ask what men want. Because men want one simple thing across the board. They just simply want cooperation. And if, a, if the rank and file man feels like he can't get cooperation, that's what's going to lead to 82% of men saying that they don't believe men, women are out here to be marriageable. And we can sit back and call the men and, and question the men. And that's, that's typical stuff and tell the men and give the men new tools to use and de-escalate. But what we never do is we never go over to the women and say, hey, how about you just don't come in here with all that? How about you get some therapy in? talk through and figure out what's going on with you, the reason why you feel like you need to move through the world that way. Can we mind if I say something real quick? Go ahead. I'm starting bringing up some more people. No problem. No problem. Um, one of the, um, this is amazing book. I talked about it on the show called His Needs, Her Needs. And, the, and there's a best-selling book, over 2 million copies. And one of the things that the author talked about was that he was having a dating service and he realized that the dating service was ineffective because he met a bunch of people, men and women alike, who were always demanding things from the other gender, but they themselves offered nothing in response. So what he then suggested was that instead of creating a dating service, why don't he equip men and women with the skills to meet the needs of the other gender? And he saw instantaneous results. And like, you know, obviously they don't see the, all the work you've done for men, you know, how, you know what I've been doing for men for all these years. But one of the biggest things that I, I have not seen is the curiosity from a lot of women to learn what exactly do men need? What exactly do men tolerate? What exactly is the tonality that men are going to step? I sent you that picture earlier about the decline of marriage in the black community. I think we need to have an honest conversation and I really want to encourage all the women to get very curious because like you said, the view, the real, is there's a lot of female dominated spaces, but there's not a lot, there's not enough women who are really spending the time to figure out what do men need? They want to tell us what we should take but they don't want to tell it they want to learn what we want it's well i was, saying, I was saying, uh, let me point. let me uh, let me just say something that you can go ahead and i understand why there's no curiosity when you're being told that everything's fine with you it's those guys and that's the thing we got people facilitating women just being all right and that doesn't help either side with an outcome so yeah, there does need to be curiosity and it'll shut down on the finger pointing because it'll help us come to the table in more good faith. Go ahead. Well, I don't want to interject. I kind of want to um, piggyback, but thank you for inviting me up to speak. Um, I, I've been raised in a pretty much a full family household. I had my, my mother and my father. They were married for like 30 years and um, we had a really big family dynamic on both sides where I was raised around a lot of men. And just through me growing up and being around women and also being around those men, I find that I was taught at a young age to know my place in a room. And when I was younger, if, if it wasn't a grown folks conversation, I didn't speak. If I was around the women, I knew my place as a child. When I was around men, I knew my place as a, as a young girl and also as a child. And that kind of helps me as a, as when I grew up as a woman, I also know my place as a woman in this world to be able to, to carry myself properly 
when it comes to communication with men. And I think that uh, when we talk about the family dynamic where there's a lot of women who didn't grow up with their father in a household, they never had that ability to be able to to move properly or know when to speak or, or know when to be quiet or, or know when to interject or, or to say something uh, properly without over speaking or, or speaking out of turn or men, the way women talk, we talk differently than the way men talk. So sometimes when I see uh, my friends, when they're in the room with men, they want to talk about things that women like to talk about. And when we're around men, it's, it's a different type of energy from my friends than it is from me because I know how to move properly around men or how to speak properly around men that's respectful. And also where I stand in my place. And I don't think that's a disrespectful thing for me to be able to say that. Like as a woman, I know my place in the room. And I can well, have I, a, a- I would say that I, I <laughs> that probably sends some chills up some women's uh, spine. Stand in your place. Um, and we're going to have to talk about all these things. See, one thing that gets missed is I don't do this show. There's a lot being said. He's this, he's that, he's, the, he's bashing it. You don't know me. You're listening to what people have to say. I don't do what I do because I don't want to see a better outcome. I could, I could make money a lot of different ways and not have to deal with the stress of trying to do a show every night to try to talk to women about things that I know most don't want to hear. But I will tell you, when I got women who are saying, thank you, when I first heard you, I didn't like it. But now my husband, my children, and my future generations owe our lives to you or something along those lines. And there are brothers out there like our fans and other people who are trying to help but you're gonna to have to hear where men are coming from. I don't expect women to like a lot of the stuff they hear, accept it at face value. I expect challenge, I expect uh, questioning, but at the end of the day, just good faith. Are we, are we trying to come out to a better outcome? Um, Danielle, Lola, did you guys have anything you wanted to say? I, I, I absolutely have something to say. Um, and I want to address your point about you know, women, I guess, taking accountability or whatever. Uh, I just came from a beautiful room that I hosted with some very, very beautiful women where we literally sat down for three hours. And this room was called, Why When Have Women Become So Hard? So there are a ton of us out there who are having these conversations, who were talking about, you know, our traumas and, and delving in deep as to why am I this way? How can I rest in my feminine energy? So in my opinion, there are far more women right now who are doing the inner work, but we need our counterparts to join us in that work. And I'm not going to get up here and, you know, bash the gentlemen because there are absolutely some wonderful guys. We had some fellows who came up in there. However, I have to say I'm seeing women, especially Black women who are trying to look at you know how and why they've become hardened we are doing that work and so I, I just want that to still be acknowledged and you know I, I appreciate you bringing me up here and I'm ready to listen to everything you guys have to say but if we could definitely acknowledge that then yeah let me say also say something because many people aren't familiar with the content I, I made previously for men um I, I openly tell guys, look, I don't want to hear about your problems. The world does not owe you understanding. Beauty costs. You want a beautiful woman, a fit woman, you want her to be all these things, then you better pay the cost to be the boss. I don't do this 50-50 shit. I tell a man that you need to be working 60 hours a week minimum, but you're getting paid for. If not, get off internet, get off Instagram, get out of these spaces, go get a job. I don't care if you got a clean toilet. I have. Go get a job at a convenience store. Do it. Check your pride. You shouldn't be, have pride in, 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 in empty pockets. Because I think there's a big problem because so many of our women, I was raised by a single mother and my father wasn't around too. I get it. And many men were not raised to be the masculine, strong men that you're starting to hear so many men step into. We're all broken. The black community, <laughs> we all, that's why I say we all need therapy. And I, I like to hear when I hear women say that they're trying to get that shit together, men are trying to get that shit, 
our stuff together because then we can approach each other with some grace, some empathy, and understand that, you know, we're better together than apart. But I am very tough on guys because at the end of the day, it is our responsibility to build in your nest. There is a reason so many women cannot feel comfortable resting in their femininity because so many men have dropped the ball. I have. I'm not perfect and I never try to make it myself seem like I'm perfect. You've been divorced twice. That's right. But that don't mean your marriage can't work once. And that's what I'm ultimately getting to. It, we have to get past the messenger and who said what and try to get to the greater outcome. How do we start making more healthy black couples? Because this is some bullshit. 50 year marriages filings in 2019 were the 50 year high. Divorces were the 50 year low. Black community has a $1.1 trillion spending power and we, people get rich off of us because we are not together. And we have people on all sides of the arguments. That's why I, what I've done with this newfound spotlight is reach out and say, where are the counselors, the therapists, the relationship coaches, the, 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 the femininity instructors, the matchmakers, uh, all the resources. All right, let's start putting together an infrastructure for a black network of people so we can actually start getting our resource, ourselves together so we can find one another. So when a woman meets a man, she can actually come in with, a, with her guard down a little bit because she can at least say, well, I know that there are men out here trying to do something other than just uh, hit and quit. I don't make it, I'm an image consultant and I have taken a lot of heat from black men for telling them, uh, take that damn t-shirt off at 40 years old, pull up your damn pants, dress like a damn man. And Kevin, well, you, you don't got see European, that. But, 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 and that thing is they can't see it because our ethnic image is shit and that's our responsibility. Black women have black media. Black men have to make black media for black men by black men to repair our own image. It's not their responsibility to give us Essence, Ebony, Matter Noir, or, or any of these other platforms. Black women check for themselves. They will make a platform to benefit themselves. It's black men who got to come out of their pocket and support black male content for black men by black men, promoting something better. We were given gangster rap and hip hop. I was in college and one minute we had X-Clan, next minute we had bitches ain't shit. I saw this stuff. I've been talking about this since 1989. So like I said, at the end of the day, I know where I stand in this thing. It ain't about me. I ain't trying to make it about me. We don't have black family. We, we don't need reparations in this net. Without black family, you can't have black nothing. And I'll say this and I've said it again. Anybody who knows me will tell you that I think it's a travesty that so many Generation X black men and black women in particular, we were lied to. I know some thorough, professional, beautiful women who there's no way in God's green earth, there's no way in hell these women should be unmarried, no children. And I also know men, there's no way in hell they should be unmarried. But we are. We are. We're unmarried, uncoupled, and don't know how to do it. We got to figure it out. And I want to address Danielle yeah, uh real quick. One of the biggest things is that, you know, I think sometimes when, you know, we talk about there's not enough men in the space creating healthy platforms, you got to go out and look for it. You know, obviously we have the platform with the roommates, Kevin, like, he said he's been doing this for quite a long time. People are just now watching more of the female oriented content, but there is a lot of male content creators who are creating healthier black men physically, mostly spiritually, financially. You know, we have tons of community. My my community has over 1600 men who are looking at improving their lives and growing and maturing. So I think when it comes to the conversation, we're not we're not looking and we have to emphasize that they are great quality men. They are places and spaces which are encouraging men, which are equipping men, which are giving the men the skills to be successful, to be great fathers, to be great husbands, to be great leaders in society. And so I really want to challenge everybody who's saying, where are these spaces for men? Because when I was on tour with Derek Jackson, Stefan Lobosier and Ace Metaphor, women would say that all the time, where are the spaces for men? I'm like, they're here. You just got to open your eyes and see it. And this is why I say for the men, this is why I say for the men, we got to do a better job at, at, at promoting it. We, we do it. We got to talk about it. We have to promote it. And this is one of the biggest failings. From 1915, D.W. Griffith's Birth of a Nation, the black male image has been under assault. Now, we actually have access to these social platforms to use to our advantage. And we need to present the image of ourselves that we are proud of and that our women can be proud of. And we got to fund it out of our own pockets. 
I think what Kevin said was accurate because there has to be more promotion. I, when I was speaking, I, I said that I acknowledge there are a lot of, you know, wonderful gentlemen who are doing the work and I'm friends with many of those gentlemen and I've collabed with them in lives on Instagram. So I know that it's out there, but oftentimes what is promoted are, you know, things like clubs labeled, you know, is this turning into you know, Pornhub is this, you know, mm -hmm. stuff about sex work and everything else. So we're not seeing that promoted as much. And maybe that's a part of it because, you know, us women, we, we are open with talking about doing our work in my opinion, but I absolutely, you know, applaud all of the men who are out there doing, doing that work. It is um, appreciated. Hey, hey. I, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, Who how is you that doing? To I'm sorry. Lola. What's your name? Lola. Hi, Lola. How are you? I'm well. I'm sorry, so, I'm new to the platform, so I'm still trying to figure it out. But go ahead. That's fine. So when you first, when your video went viral, I did go listen to it, and I actually went and I looked on your YouTube page, and I looked at a lot of your posts and videos. Some of them were very long, so I'm not going to sit here and say I listened to all of it. <laughs> but what I did gather from it were um, the I mainly listened to the ones that were African American, and what I did gather was even listening to you where it's like it's a destruction of our family in itself so the family has been destroyed and so with the family being destroyed and i'm noticing that but when you were speaking it was very surface and and they were calling about surface things as well and i understand you know i agree with you um you are just brutally honest and a lot of people can't take that brutality because they're not ready to accept the accountability of what it is that you were stating. So it is about delivery, like Brittany was saying, because you have to remember if someone is fragile, because I'm a mental health professional, so I'm a little bit, you know, more therapeutic with my words because it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So if someone comes to you and they ask questions, but I, again, that's not your realm, so I understand. But, and I, like I said, for me, it's I, the destruction of our family in its whole. So our men, they, a lot of them have changed roles because the women of this society, a lot of us, our women in general, are making more money than their mate. And so men become intimidated and if you are in a certain bracket like that woman she said she made six figures so if she's looking for someone and, and i'm gonna speak for myself too in a relationship and like you said women do we do the same thing and you're right it, it is a double-edged sword and it is we wouldn't get um what you got you got attacked we wouldn't have gotten attacked but they would have agreed with us like oh no she's making this she's not got to make <laughs> Huh? It's, it's, it's an understatement. It's an understatement. Well, I'm saying yeah. you went viral, and a mm -hmm. lot of the a lot of it was negative. But mm -hmm. I'm also one who's honest and saying what he said. He was just brutally honest, but it's true. If you're asking for something, like I tell everyone, are we able to provide what we want to receive? And that's the question that you have to ask yourself. So if you go out and you say you want this man, he's six feet, um, making six figures, he um, drives this or drives that, can you provide that as well? Well, let me and say this. Let me say let, let me let me say because it's kind of getting long. Um, one, I am not a clinician. I never hold myself out as a clinician. That's why I often say you need therapy. Um, and many people are saying, well, you should have did this. Look, you don't go to your cardiologist to get you, uh, you don't go to your dentist to get uh, for heart surgery. I stayed in the lane I'm in, but, but we're so quick to tell black men, you need to do better. I'm, I'm very good at what I do. And I gave her exactly what she asked for. It wasn't the brutal truth. It was very tactful. If you watch the entire video, <laughs> Men are seeing this very differently. Well, I say most men are seeing it very differently. I did my level best to not have to. Please, ma'am, don't make me say it. Because I have a professional opinion and a personal opinion. But as an image consultant and social skills coach, that is what I'm supposed to talk about. And she understood that. That's number one. Number two, you know, 
if you want a man at that level, that's fine. But you need to know what those men tend to want. Did anybody, does anybody remember what the, what, when I asked her, what would you happen to bring to the table for the kind of man you want, what he wants? Did anybody have to remember her answers? Did she say she was like a farmer or something? She or said, she, she, she said, groomer. she said, if he I can a help, groomer. she said, I, well, if he has a that's business, great. I can help him with his business. And I said, you know, that's great. But only 20 to 30 percent of the population really owns a business so that may or may not matter then she said i plant my own garden right and i'm into self-improvement and etiquette now i need you guys to understand what it takes to make a man like isaac or ac hatchet or a man like myself we don't come out making what we're making and oh and i've heard six figures ain't that much are we kidding I mean, come on, whether it's in, and it's adjusted, but it's adjusted for income. But at the end of the day, a man has, men are being told, you got to go improve. You got to go do this, 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 in order to be on the level, to be acceptable and suitable, to be a, a father, a husband or whatever, you got to go get better. And for men to hear that that was the extent of the curiosity that a middle-aged mother of a 13 year old son had about a man. That's disheartening to men. But we'll get focused on what I said versus what she was saying to her son and men. Mm -hmm. I think uh, she brought her weight. I think she brought up her, um, the physical first, which I thought was where everything went downhill. Um, right. Why? She said, look the, at, the, can you see, she said, can you see me? But it, it it doesn't. But that's the show. I'm an image consultant. Right. That's that's the that's the whole thing. And it's a question that I ask. And I did not. I, she said, "Can I see her?" And I could. And I keep my profession, my personal opinion, to myself. I said that's why I asked her, "What would you rank yourself?" There were people who had a, a problem with me asking her those questions. It was like you're not supposed to ask women anything. You're supposed to accept this is what we want and give it to us. Ladies, that's not gonna work. So, do, would you say, Kevin, because this is what you do, you're an image consultant. So, I understand you're saying because she wants this man who makes this type of amount. Do, but would you say, because you're saying because she wanted this, she's 35 and she has this um, a child and a questionable baby's father. Because of that, that's gonna limit her to get in the man that she wants. What about character? Uh, well, two answers. One, character is a different discussion from what I have. Just like his faith. I, I mentioned character, but it's not what I'm concerned with primarily. I am not a one-stop shop. And that's what we got to stop doing, trying to make it about everything. And the men, there, were, there have been at least three panels of black men on YouTube, attorneys, bankers, uh, physicians. I'm actually going to put them up on my channel next week of men discussing it. Men in the very category. And you know what the men in the very category, even on other platforms that aren't necessarily friendly to mine, men are saying the same thing. Uh, where I'm at, I would want a woman primarily with I, my first, I want her to have no children and I prefer to be younger. This is what the men are saying. That's what oh, they're I mean saying. So is it, so is it, so is it going to, is it going to, is it a hundred percent? No, but I said what I meant. She said, I said, why don't you just go get an average guy? Because ma'am, you're not running Microsoft. You have a business. Okay. Why don't you just go get an average guy in North Carolina, which there are plenty more and average is not an, is not an insult. And what, what was her answer? Her answer was, I, 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 can't get an average guy because I, in order to, in order for me to fully submit, he's got to make more than me. So what are we telling to 90% of black men who don't make more than her? And you automatically can't get submission from her. And I said, well, ma'am, if that's the case, women like you die alone. If you're going to keep that standard where it is and you and the reality of your life, I said, these men are not knocking down your door. She said, that's right. My dating life is not that good. I'm like, you don't know where these men are. 
You don't know how to find them. You don't know what they want. I tell you what the men who are in that category have told me over years what they want. They don't want dot, 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 dot. I'm telling women what these men are saying because they're my clients. They're my colleagues. And if you ask them, they will tell you, no, that's not what we want. And she said, well, yeah, but what can I do to get them? It didn't matter that I told her that these guys don't tend to want these things. All she wanted me to tell her was, here's how you can get them. That's why I said, well, but I can't Kevin, do anything. Kevin, was there, is there not an option for a woman like that to find someone who is a high earner, but perhaps, you know, she can date someone who also what, has what a child. Do you think there, what, what do you think the option is? No, I'm, know. I'm, well, I was posing the question to you. Do, do you think that that's not an option for a woman like herself who said, Hey, I'm a successful business owner to now. What does that have to do with anything? What does earner? that have to, what does that mean? We to don't me? care. I don't, don't care, about, care about, that. about that. But can I yeah, finish? Can I finish? Somebody who is maybe that is important to them they also have a child so they don't view that as a negative basically what i'm getting at is there's a lid okay for Lola, pot. Is, is that, that not an option or, or danielle okay if i told her it was an option you know what that's going to do continue to feed that hope and delusion that they're available when they are not numerically what percentage of men would fit that category first off we're roughly how many in this country, 40 million of us, 22 million black men, 22 million black men, 10, well, not even 8% of black men, is it 8% or 6%? 6% of black men earn over six figures. So what's 6% of 22 million adjusted for age of 18 to 65? Because men earn, men enter their um, financial stride after at age 52. So what percentage of black men, see the numbers are, are, we can feel what we want, but the numbers are stubborn things. Take six or 8% of roughly 40 to 60 year old black men who, who are single heterosexual and earn the kind of money and tell me how many men those are. It ain't millions. But if, but what you guys want me to say is, yeah, sis, there's a chance. Well, you know what? That if I was a, and that would be also if I'm a financial planner or a financial advisor, that would be just as impractical as saying, yeah, why don't you go ahead and play Powerball as a as a retirement strategy? Hit the lotto. It could work. No. And there's a, there's a really interesting article I would challenge everybody to read. Brookings Institute has an article called, Is There a Shortage of Marriageable Men? And in the article, it breaks down a lot of statistics that Kevin's always quoting on his, on his show. And one of the things it talks about is they, when they ask women, what is the number one trait that you guys want in a marriageable man? The number one thing women said they wanted was a guy who has a job. When they asked men, what's the number one trait you want in a marriageable woman? The number one thing that men said is to not have a, have a child. So one of the biggest things I'm constantly hearing is whenever a woman has standards, she creates her rules. I want height, I want money, I want this. Then she wants a guy. The rule is always that guy that she wants is not gonna have any standards. Well, that guy just only wants, well, what if he just wants her for a character? But why won't she just want a guy for his character? Why does she need that money? Why does she need that high? We don't question her. We always assume that the guy is an individual who's going to have no standards and the woman can ask for whatever she wants and there's no standards. So I highly, like I keep on saying, like I would advise men and women to get curious about one another, see what each other wants. And the biggest thing, like I keep on saying is look up the information, do your research yourself. Brookings Institute article, Google search it, is there a shortage of marriageable men? And it really breaks down that in the black community, when you look at women who have jobs and no kids and men who have jobs and men who have no kids, there are more kids, there are more men than women. When you use those two variables, you can look it up. It's online, it's public data, all of it's available public data. So I keep on like, I, I, you guys got to get curious about the data. You guys got to research this stuff yourself and you got to learn from men exactly what they want. It's available online. I would challenge anybody to look it up right now and share the numbers themselves. Okay, the median, the median uh, earning of black men in this country, $41,054. 
That's the median earning for black men. All other men, well, this is white men, 52,400. Uh, 52, okay, 13% of black men make $75,000 or more. That's just sip 75. When you take it over 100, it drops down to eight. 8%. So it's numerically daunting just by the numbers. Then when you start adjusting for age, geography, sexual orientation, marital status, and what you, what and what Hafez is saying is what I said. The problem is we you women have been told you can have it all, and you cannot. Life is about choices and trade-offs. And that's what I'm ultimately trying to get a conversation. Women starting to understand that men that you want, want things. They have preferences. They have standards. And this, what this whole video has shown me that this is really new news to so many black women. That it is mind blowing and mind boggling so much so that they wanted to attack the messenger because the message just sounded like an outright lie. But what you're starting to see is it's the truth. To be so honest with you, I Kevin, yeah. I feel like we get more of the message that we need to be open to take what we can get. If I can be completely honest with you, I feel like what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, take what you can get. What does that mean? Is it exactly that i feel like people are consistently telling black women hey you need to taper your expectations because this is what's out there this is what guys are well, making well danielle if the expectation is unrealistic should it not be tapered well i mean i'm not sure who i am to say that it's unrealistic because well, if we're okay, speaking in well, terms of dating black men maybe but there are black women who are open to dating outside of their race yeah and outside one in four of black women will marry range. in their lifetime okay one in four black women will marry regardless as to race moving outside the race does not change black women's opportunities drastically but can we really say that when so few yes black we can women when do, one in four black, so black women, black women their, do it okay okay danielle then if that's the case, black women should be happy. Should be happy than any other time because you're earning more, making more, more educated according to some polls. And if and if more men are wanting to marry, you should be on top of the world. Not one in four taking some sort of antipsychotic depression medication or whatever. See, hey, Kevin, what you're basically, listen, 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 listen. What you're basically saying is the same trope that black women are being told to take what you get, i.e. settle. And see, what's wrong with getting somebody that's suitable? And this is what you're telling black men, that most of you aren't suitable to us. No, what I didn't makes say them that unsuitable? Now. I didn't say well, that. Well, oh, okay, well, then what, <laughs> being, being told to settle, what are you settling for? I didn't say that. I'm saying for every woman, she has her bar. She gets to decide where that bar is. And for it's Yes, she gets woman, to decide where her bar is. Okay, so let me different. ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. Yes, you're right. But this is a market-based economy. You own a car. You can decide whatever price you want to pay on the on the car. But who gets mm -hmm. to decide? Who gets to decide how much it's worth? The the person who's selling it. Wrong. The market decides. Mm -hmm. The market always decides. Oh, oh, ma'am. Yes. That's you why can't sell a Toyota Blue camera for four hundred thousand dollars. You can't sell a Toyota no, camera. Excuse me. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That's why there's a Kelly Blue Book. But there's go always try to, someone go listen, willing Danielle, to buy Danielle, that they're Danielle, selling Danielle, prints. Danielle, 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 Danielle. We're educated people. We're intelligent. The market decides. This is not a Kevin Samuels concept. It's product theory. The market decides. Well, that that's y'all's take, and I respect you guys' opinion. In my mind, we all get to set our price, and if someone wants to pay that, then they have the option to do that. Right, but they so. are part of the market. That's the thing, ma'am. Okay, okay. You can set your price, but... You look like a woman. You shot before. Go into Neiman Marcus. Go to Tom, go to Neiman Marcus and try to set your price for what you want to pay. See how that works. Hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carla. Kevin, I, I, just have, I have a real quick question for you. Um, based on what you've been saying, which I do agree with you, how has this? How have you navigated this through personal relationships? Has people re been resistance to what you say? Why you're, I'm not talking about Clubhouse. I'm not talking about just the internet. I'm talking about your your own life. Because I know you're only as good as the per you're only as rational as the person you're with or who you're dealing with. So based on what you've been saying, how has that 
um, been interpreting across your. I don't. Your could you make the question a little bit more simple? What are you trying to get, ask me? I'm asking you basically based on what you've been saying. How has this? How have you been able to navigate your own personal relationships with this? Just fine. Hmm? So just fine. Okay. So because I, I my question. whole point is like what I'm saying is. I feel as though sometimes when you get, when you deal with certain people, whoever you're dealing with, you're only as rational as the people who you're dealing with. So if somebody doesn't understand that concept, then you might have a miscommunication and you're not, there might be no comprehension. Or not deal with them. That's exactly. true. Exactly. I mean, I mean, if somebody's a clinician, I mean, but again, again, there's a professional and a personal standpoint. If someone is a clinician, to ask them, hey, how, what's going on in your personal life? How does that impact what you tell a, a client or a patient? I don't understand. What do you mean I do. I, I think that's the disconnect when it comes to men and women. I think that a lot of us women, we aren't very logical when it comes to relationships. You know, just kind of like how, how you brought in, you know, the Kelly Blue Book and the Marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's all about numbers. And when it comes to women, we've been fed all these fairy tales and, you know, that, oh, we deserve love. And while, yes, we do deserve love, but yeah. everything yeah. is still a numbers game. And you can have any man that you want if you play the numbers. If you do all the things that requires you to do in order for you to get all the things that you want, then you can have everything that you want. But if you decide to procrastinate or decide that one thing is too much for you to take on as far as mm -hmm. whether it's that's the fitness or whether that's the, you know, the aspect of your, 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 your physical features, all these things are changeable. And I, and that's something that I had to learn for myself growing up. You know, you, we grow up watching the books and them telling us all these things about what love is and what that looks like. And, you know, oh, we, you know, we have to have a good heart, but they don't actually teach us the marketplace portion well, of let, relationship. Let, let, let me say so, this. Let me say this, Danielle. There's yes. the, the statistics saying one out of four black women will marry in their lifetime. Have you heard that? Yes, I've, I've seen the numbers. All right. That means three out of four will die alone. And that's what struck people so much. Not that you're average or you're average at best, it's the dying alone. But if one out of four will marry in their lifetime, that means three out of four will die alone. So while you can set your price, just like switch it to a car, I, you can set the price. The car has been kept in the garage and I know every mile that's on it. I change the oil myself. People <laughs> can get, can feel what they want to, but when you set it on the corner, it's got a Kelly blue book value. Okay. That's why pawn shops exist. Cause folks get real. This is worth so much. Take it to a pawn shop. And here's what we're actually telling people. Women are feeling like when I'm telling you to, uh, get reasonable, rational, that somebody's telling you to settle for less. Well, I got to ask you, that settle for less has a face on it and it's a man. You're telling men that they are less. Could I say something? Go ahead. So as a woman who's approaching it from a reasonable standpoint and just attempting to be reasonable or wanting to be un understanding, and there, I know that man has a face on it, as you said, but what about the situations where men are threatened and feel uncomfortable with a woman that makes more than them? So what is your, do you have advice for those women or, or those situations? And I'm, I'm more is so asking you? a question. I'm not is challenging. That you? Is yes. that you? Yes. I've had that experience and I'm, I'm in the no man's land is what you okay. call it. So, so here's what I, here's what I say. Uh, date a different caliber of man. How do you do that? <laughs> Therapist, personal trainer, matchmaker, image consultant. Ladies, you get to choose who you make yourself available to, but men get to decide whether or not they offer a relationship. You choose so, if Kevin, sex happens, we choose if relationship happens. But, but my question is, if you're saying that 
if you're let's say older i'm 39 mm -hmm. i know right. this, oh, the no man's land and okay. you're having to be more reasonable okay. and it's not going to necessarily be a six-figure man let's say I, i'm not going to necessarily get a six-figure man but then there are men that i'm trying to like i said be reasonable and they're threatened or don't or their ego is threatened and i could not be doing anything or flashing anything but just well okay uh, okay okay like, so right. again um all right so basically what i'm hearing you say is that the men are intimidated by the amount of money you make that's a hundred percent is that is that what you're ultimately saying I'm saying that there are some men out. I'm not sure. I'm not saying every man is like that because I'm not like disciplined. But what about the men that aren't? I'm, I'm sure there are men that aren't. I just okay. Then where I, are they? That's what I'm trying to understand. Like how? Where do you live? I live in Michigan. What part? Uh, I live 45 minutes outside of Detroit. There's a problem. Move to a major metropolitan area where men make more. See, I've been telling women this too. See. Another thing, let me go ahead and a lot of you ladies think you're going to just get something for nothing. You're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to move. You're going to have to, ch you may have to move, change religions. You may have to, if you got kids uh, and the man is serious about not having kids, you may have to shift. The, custody goes to the dad. Can he manage the money? Can he discipline the kids? Like there is on. See, all these things come into play. It's not as there's a shortage of men, but what are you willing to sacrifice to get what it is you want? But unfortunately, you've been fed the Disney fantasy that Prince Charming is around the corner and Whole Foods or Barnes and Noble or at your church, and they're not there. Kevin, I want to address intimidated the by, if, if Hold on. If men are intimidated in your area, then go to a matchmaker. But you have to find a different caliber of men if they're not readily available to you but they do exist i wanted to address the comment you made kevin about telling oh we're telling men that they are less i don't think that that's necessarily what we're telling men by not choosing them because they don't meet whatever standard uh you know we women have i think what we're saying is hey look I'm I'm willing to stay in the dating market or I am willing to be alone because I am fulfilled on my own with or okay. without a partner. You can want a partner, of course, but okay. I that's I don't think it's necessarily telling But men aren't the ones complaining. But here's the thing, Danielle. But here's the thing, Danielle. Men aren't the ones complaining about dying alone. We're not. We're not complaining about a lack of women. We're not. Women are constantly talking about what's wrong with men. And see Here's another thing that I find that gets interesting. Women are always talking about the dating market. All you need is one. You can only have one. Find your one and get out the dating scene. All you need is one. Go I got find you. It. I got you. We may we may be talking about it more, but I absolutely feel like there are men who are scared of ending up alone. You can feel like it, man, but it doesn't matter. Well, if they were, if they listen, scared, man. Listen they what, I mean. Listen what, I mean. listen what I mean. Listen what I mean. Listen what I mean. See, see, you're not listening. Okay. See, you run. Women run their logic through their emotions. Why don't you? Men aren't okay. If every black man married and every marriageable black man got married, there'd still be two million black women. I got news for you. The leverage and time is not on your side. If you want a man, uh, there's a time component and opportunity. Sands of the hourglass are moving. Now, saying that I'm not going to settle, I'm going to keep my standard high, I got, that's why I say buy a dog. That's an option too. But when you got that dog and you're 65 years old, that's the life you chose. Be happy with it. But I'm not seeing that women are happy with their lives. Okay, Kevin, um, I have a question. You know, when you keep you keep using the word average, if you really look and dissect the word average, aren't we all average? Cause, cause most people are. Yes, most people are average. Okay. Most people, most people are average. Most people are right in the middle. Fifty percent of the population is average. That's what I said. Average is average is not an insult to men. This seems to be really much of an insult to women. They're average. Yeah. Hey, Kevin. I think we're, 
Yeah. I gotta I gotta run and that's we're gonna have to wrap this one up. Okay. But um go ahead. This this okay, well I I don't wanna like I'm not disagreeing with anything that you are saying up there. Um I actually agree with what you said to the young lady. Maybe then I the words that you use, I probably would have not used them, but you know, to each its own. Um, I just want the room to know because there's so many people in here. We have to remember it was a comment stated that women are not curious enough about learning about black men feelings and you know what they want and what they need and I just want want the men to know that there are women out there that are doing those things I just held a room on clubhouse you know showing love towards black men acknowledging black men asking about those feelings and I think from both perspectives we both have to just be vulnerable enough to make sure that we're having that dialogue in those conversations so that we can learn you know what those needs are and what those preferences are and you know what turns you off what turns you on so I just wanted to say that because I don't want everybody in the room to get the wrong um, impression that well, there's no women out there that are doing those things because well, it, I mean, it's not it's, it's not the men what I tend to hear from men more than anything else is I call it the aha moment. Men in general want to hear, know that women have had their aha moment where they've become accountable for themselves and where they are, honest with where they are, the numbers, everything else, and then the, the admission part. You know, and so many, so it's one thing to say these things, but men want to see it from women. And what men are seeing from women is when you got 82% of men saying that the, mar the current dating marketplace lacks marriageable women, that's a problem. If, 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 if I were a woman, I would say that's a problem if 82% of men think this, regardless of how scientific it is or not, okay? And you can't go to the 82% and say, who hurt you? Your mama black, you gay, something. You're gonna have to ask the market what they want. Listen, ladies, the end consumer of a product that is a woman is a man. And if we're intelligent business people, you don't go to the consumer and tell them, you, this is what you want. You try to understand what the consumer wants and give them a better product to incent them to buy. Black men are saying they want a different or a better quote unquote, quote unquote, better quote unquote product. They're not saying they don't want to get married. It's not what they're saying. They're saying they want a marriageable woman. So. I'll leave it there. Um, here's the thing. The goal is to try to help folks come down to the table because at the end of the day, it comes down to a one-to-one -one negotiation. All these stats, figures, and statistics. When my mother found her husband, that the woman who raised me and the woman right now who got married to 50 are, are completely different people. She married the least likely man I would ever imagine in my life. And she's been the happiest I've ever seen her in her entire life for the last 23 years. If my mother can get it, she can get it too. But then her sisters, one died alone, the other one's on the way to dying alone. I've seen this dynamic. I've seen it too much. And I don't want, personally, I would prefer to see people get together. And, you know, I've said it personally, over 27 years old, love comes later, give respect. I know a lot of people don't share my views and that's fine. You don't have to, but at the end of the day, it comes down to a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship with a man and one, uh, a man and woman make an agreement, a negotiation. Cause when it's all said and done, it ain't about hot butt naked freaky circus sex on the coffee table. It's about, I'm gonna put your teeth in. You're going to give me my insulin shot. You're going to go down to the, you're going to, you, you're going to go down to the pharmacy to pick up my, my heart medicine while I put this soup on. I mean, come on, people. We're the only group that is this fractured and this separated. And the contention between men and women 
we've got to stop the war and start negotiating the peace. At least that's how I see it. Well, that's where I'm at. So how the men talk, I think it may be shocking to a lot of women. And here's the problem, men, you got to start speaking because what I'm hearing is women aren't used to hearing men speak the way we speak. The way I spoke is the way men talk. And we used to be able to talk that way, but men are being, feel, and there is a not, it's not a, men are feeling like they can't say what they say because they'll get canceled, they'll get shunned. Well, man, you're gonna have to risk it. You're gonna have to risk it unless you wanna walk through life, tiptoeing through things that you know don't make you happy, you know, None of us are going to get out of this unscathed. Isn't that a narcissistic, like a narcissistic, uh, uh, like type uh, of personality? Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. See, a, a narcissistic type. Of, what does narcissist mean? I, if, as a no. mental health provider, I will speak on that because everybody. No, no, I, want, I, I, I want her to tell me. What does that mean? Yeah, that's some. That's someone. What is, it, what is a narcissist? In a, I mean, in a nutshell, that's someone that's like, you know, they see things their way. It's they are above. They are the right. They're right in how they execute things and how they say things. Just, just to summarize it up. But no, I mean, I'm just I'm asking you a question. I'm not trying to be confrontational here because it seems like but, you but think no, I okay, am. No. No, I'm just asking. Words mean things. Okay. When you say narcissist, it means yeah. something. The mental health professional, would you like to go ahead and chime in there? Personality yes. disorder. Right. <laughs> yes, it is. It. Go ahead. Oh, like it is an access to disorder, and I know. Um, in the term, the main thing about a narcissist is that people forget to add. To be a narcissist, you ha you lack empathy. Thank That's you. The main thing. Lack of empathy. Mm -hmm. The dark. See, and we we throw these words out. I hear black women throwing out terms: narcissist, bash, massage, and war. And I'm like, so a, when a woman has a standard, she's not settling. When a man has a standard, he's a colorist. You guys play slick and loose with men, but you don't hold yourself to the same standard. How often do you call black women narcissists because they don't want to settle? And this is part of the issue. If who has an over narcissist? Um, one of several personality disorders and a mental condition where some people have an inflated sense of their own importance, a deep need for excessive attention, admiration, trouble relationship, and lack of empathy for others. And men knowing men men wanting what they want does not make them narcissists. It makes them normal. And black men, stop feeling shame for what you want. Shame, insults, guilt, and the need to be right. I call it sign language. Stop letting people make you feel guilty for being a man. Stop letting them shame you for wanting what you want. Stop letting them insult you because you say you want what anyone else should deserve for your level. And you don't have to engage it. If that's what they think of you, detach with love and keep it moving. There's something better on the other side. And I think we should also give that message to Black women as well. Black women have had that message given to them. Uh, I don't think Black women have, my personal opinion, Black women have been told you're fine for the longest. You're queens, you're the mothers of the earth, <laughs> all these things. And here's the thing, why when I say to give something to men, is it always seems to be the knee jerk response to go in and say, uh-uh, give women something too. Just like when I ask you, you've had contract with the black America. Well, what about for black women? Can black men ever have something on our own? I think Just black women have, can also say that when we talk about things yeah, like Yeah, but I'm asking about and, this. And okay. It's a and what see, about and, me too. And, and, and I'm gonna tell you right now, this is and what and and go ask the men what I just said because men are men are really getting tired of having to, yeah, but not all, but men do it too. Well, you want this, well, men too. The reason my brother's keeper fell because black women demanded you wanna do something for black boys, gotta do something for black girls too. Black men are tired of that, ladies. We're not, we're your men, we're not your enemy. And if we had good faith, we wouldn't have to keep asking for these provisions. 
But see, that's the problem. I don't think we have good faith. So we keep asking for insurance, guarantees, hedging. How do you build a relationship with that? Just a thought. Thank you guys for joining in. We'll do this again. Till next time, peace out. It's not